This is an overview of CubeCost 2.0. At the top, we see links to reports that can be accessed. We have cluster information, cluster trending information, cluster efficiency, namespace at a glance information, cloud cost breakdown, as well as network cost breakdown. Allocations is where we gain insight into Kubernetes workload costs. Those costs are collected across CPU, GPU, memory, storage, network, and load balancer. We also have two additional columns, shared and efficiency. Shared represents costs that you want to share across all of your tenants in your multi-tenant cluster. Shared costs can represent things like cluster management overhead fees, shared software costs, or even shared namespaces. Efficiency represents the efficiency of your workloads. Workloads with a low efficiency score are workloads that are typically over-provisioned. Workloads with an efficiency score above 100% are typically workloads that are under-provisioned. The other information that we can see here in this screen is trending information compared to week on week. For this example, my, these costs that are in green are costs that have gone down from the previous time frame. The costs that are in red are costs that have increased since the previous time frame. Within this allocations view, we can change the way that we visualize the data. We can change our time window up to the last 12 months in the UI. This data is queryable indefinitely via the API. We can also look at different ways to aggregate the data. Down here right now, I am aggregated via namespace, but we can aggregate via any of these other dimensions. We can also aggregate uh, based on labels. We can do multi-aggregations as well. So if we click on multi-aggregation and then say namespace and cluster, now I am looking at namespaces per cluster. The other thing we can do here is we can add filters to this view. So I can filter based on any of these areas here. We also have some qualifiers that we can add uh, to the filter in order to narrow it down more. The last thing that we have here is we have a number of different ways we can visualize this data. We can look at cost over time, which we're looking at now. We can look at cost, we can look at efficiency. New to Cube Cost 2 is this cost forecast capability. In this example, this is taking realized costs and then extrapolating them out into a projected spend with some level of confidence. While allocations represents the view of Kubernetes resources, assets represents the view of the infrastructure for those Kubernetes resources. As we saw in the allocations view, we can change the time boundary for this view, we can change the different types of aggregations. We can apply filters to this view. We can edit this view, including a cost forecast capability as we saw in the allocation section. We can also save this view. Any views that we see in KubeCost can be saved as a view to later then be shared as a report. Drilling down into the assets in this assets view, allows us to visualize the cost for the network infrastructure that is responsible for running those Kubernetes workloads. If I drill into these, we can see details around each component, uh, what the component is, how long it's been running, what the cost is for that component. As long as these components have been labeled or tagged appropriately, the cost for the infrastructure components can be properly allocated back to the cost for a Kubernetes workload. Cloud Cost Explorer gives us details around all costs present in a cloud bill, regardless of if they are being used for Kubernetes workloads or not. In my example, we can see I've got some EC2 instances that are being 93% utilized for Kubernetes whereas my cloud storage and S3 costs are not being used by Kubernetes at all. This is going to represent every service that KubeCost can see within your cloud bill. Drilling down to these cloud costs, 
will let me see not only the assets, but if I drill down into each asset, I can see the cost for each asset over the given time period window. The clusters monitoring section allows us to see which clusters are being monitored by cube cost and which clusters are not. In my environment, these three clusters with the green dots are being monitored by cube cost. The ones with the yellow dots are not. If I drill into a given cluster, what I will see here will be at a glance details about that cluster. External cost is a new feature to cube cost that is currently in beta. External costs allow you to work with costs that are being incurred in other cloud providers. In my example, I have Datadog configured and running in Datadog's cloud. We have the same types of capabilities in terms of being able to put time boundaries around our data, being able to aggregate the data in different ways, and being able to filter the data in different ways. If I drill down into this cost, now I can see the costs that are associated with the infrastructure host and the log files. This feature is in beta development and eventually will be expanded to include other cloud providers. Network monitoring gives you insight into network costs. We can change the time window. We can change the view pods, namespaces, or cluster. In my example, we're looking at namespaces. And then we can also add a filter to this view. In this view, the blue boxes represent the Kubernetes services that are in your clusters. The green boxes represent the external cloud services that those clusters are communicating with. If we click the View Details button down here at the bottom, we can see the total cost for this network traffic, we can see sent and received per namespace. We can also see sent and received to the internet. If I drill down into one of these boxes, I can drill down into this Grafana namespace, for example, and we click on the uh, drill down button. Now what I can see is that namespace and all of the services that this namespace is communicating with. And down here at the bottom again, we can see traffic that is sent and received from this namespace to those services, and then to the internet. Collections are another new Cube Cost 2 feature. Collections allow you to group cloud costs as well as Kubernetes costs together into a logical entity like a cost center. In this example, I've got a number of collections created. We will take a look at one that is for an owner. We can see here that I've got Kubernetes assets that are aggregated along certain uh, filters. So we've got labels and namespaces here. We've got Kubernetes assets that are added via namespaces. We have cloud assets that are added via labels and via services. To add costs to a collection, we click this Add a Cost button. I've got two different domains to choose from. This is my Kubernetes domain. We can put time boundaries around this. We can aggregate this in a number of different ways. We can filter it in a number of different ways to get down to the data that we want. For the purposes of this example, we'll assume that this, engine, uh, this in Ingress Nginx application belongs to Jesse. We click the Add button, and now that Kubernetes cost is added to this collection. I can then come over to my cloud domain and for the purposes of this example, we will say that Jesse is also responsible for my AWS VPC spend. So we will add that cost to that collection as well. Now, if I come back over here to this collection, we can see that those costs have been added to that collection. And now we have a comprehensive cost for this collection that includes Kubernetes assets as well as cloud assets. Reports can be created from any view on the KubeCost screen. To create a report, we click this Create a Report button. We have three different types of reports that correspond to the three different main monitoring sections. Once I have created a report, I can schedule that report by clicking this Actions button. I can schedule a report 
to be sent out daily, weekly, or monthly. It can be sent as a CSV or a PDF file, and it can be sent to individual users or to mailing list distributions. KubeCost also gives you insight into where you can save money on your cloud spend. There are 10 different areas that we can look into in terms of being able to achieve some savings. I like to look at this as a bottom-up exercise, so we're going to start by looking at container requests. Container request right-sizing recommendations are based on the difference between resources requested versus resources consumed. We can see on this screen that some of these bars, I've got black and blue and green bars all the way across, whereas other ones have these light gray cross-hatched bars. The light gray cross-hatched bars represent resource inefficiencies. The way we can correct this is if I look at an example deployment, we can see here that this current request is for 70 megs of RAM for this deployment. This deployment is averaging 15 megs of RAM with a maximum of 17. KubeCost recommends setting that to 26 megs for that request, which will then make this workload run more efficient without all of the wasted resource overhead. Same thing on the CPU side here, we can see that the current request is for 100 millicores, whereas the average is two with a maximum of four millicores. KubeCost says if we set this request to 10 millicores, we will make this workload more efficient and we will be able to achieve some measure of savings. These container right sizing recommendations are based on profiles. A profile can have a time frame as well as a production, deployment, high availability, or custom profile. When we change these profiles, the recommended resources that are recommended in this window in the back get changed. So for example, for a production profile, these recommendations are based on 65% of CPU and RAM target utilization, whereas in a development environment, those resources don't need quite as much overhead, so we're gonna give recommendations based on 80% of both CPU and RAM target utilization. Right sizing container request is just one way that cube cost can help you achieve some savings in your cloud bill. There are other avenues for savings exploration, such as right sizing persistent volumes, managing underutilized nodes, managing unclaimed volumes, abandoned workloads, with an ultimate goal of right-sizing cluster nodes to make sure that they are as efficient for given workloads as they can be. Actions is another KubeCost 2 feature. We can create actions by clicking this Create Action button, and then some of the activities that we saw in the previous Savings Insight page can now be automated so we can achieve savings around cluster turndown request sizing, and namespace turndown. These actions require a cluster controller to be enabled in order for these actions to work. Alerts can be based on either events or time-based. If I click Create Alert, I can see the different types of alerts that are available. Some of these, for example, budget alerts are event-based, so if a budget goes over a certain cost threshold. I want to alert a team using either Slack webhooks or team webhooks, or we can send emails to a distribution list. The other type of alert that's available are recurring updates. These are not event-based, these are time-based and are sent out at regular intervals, again, to either Slack or Teams recipients via webhooks or via email recipients. Budgets are another new KubeCost 2 feature. I can create a budget by clicking the New Budget button. I give this budget a name. I give it an amount. I decide, is this budget going to be a weekly or a monthly budget? Is it based on a namespace, a cluster, or a label? Once I have decided what I want to base this budget on, I can create an action. Actions are going to have a trigger percentage where when this percentage is reached of that budget, then we can notify 
via email, via Slack webhooks, or via Teams webhooks. Anomaly detection is another new CubeCost 2 feature. This feature is in beta and is under active development. Anomalies are detected using a score for the cost of each service over a given time window. On days where that service cost is significantly above or below the mean, then we're going to flag those costs. Clicking into this cost will then take you to the window for that cost that was flagged. Teams is a new CubeCost 2 feature that allows you to create teams and assign them roles directly in the user interface. Once you have SAML or an OIDC provider configured, we can then add a team. We can give this team a name. The team members can have any of these three roles. They can be an admin, an editor, or read-only role. We can add filters so that teams are able to only view assets based on these filters. Once I've added teams and roles and filters, then those team members can log in and be a part of their assigned groups, and then they will then only have access to the resources that that team is allowed to access.